Hello everyone. So up until a few weeks ago, my lawn was looking beautiful and then, and then this happened. We've had moles for a while now working their way below the surface and we had come to an understanding the moles and I. They would keep it tidy below the surface and I would just kind of leave them be. But then our puppy Sammy realized they were there and decided to investigate and now we have this mess. But maybe your issue with moles is not a puppy who's trying to get at them. Maybe you're, you're just dealing with moles and their attempt to upend your OCD equilibrium. So the question is, how do we deal with these pesky moles? Well, before we begin, it's important in the words of Sun Tzu that you know your enemy. The first thing you should know is that if you live in South Africa, there are no moles in your garden. And no, you're definitely not imagining the mess in your garden. Somebody is messing with your lawn. It's just that moles are not native to Africa. They're actually Northern Hemisphere residents. What you actually are seeing in your garden is one of either two groups of mole-like creatures that are found in Southern Africa. It's either golden moles or mole rats. Golden moles are a distant relative of the hedgehog and they're mainly insectivores and they particularly love termites. So they do actually have their good side. They range in size from about eight to around about 20 centimeters and, the, and they're covered in a moisture and like dirt repellent fur. They can be black, gray, or sometimes even yellow. Their eyes are pretty much non-functional and their ears are just like tiny holes. So their sense of touch is highly developed to the point where they can actually feel termites and other insects nearby. That's pretty amazing. Golden moles are generally solitary creatures. They can, they can travel great distances looking for food. And I think the Grant's golden mole has been found to travel, I think as much as six kilometers searching for food. Unfortunately, I think it's about 11 of the 21 species of golden moles are now close to extinction. The other possible culprit is the mole rat. The name mole rat is a bit of a misleading title. It's not a mole or a rat. It's probably a closer relative to a porcupine. These guys are herbivores and they enjoy munching on bulbs and, and grass stolons and they'll often eat but won't destroy the bulbs that they feed on. They tend to live in family units of up to 14 individuals and they're unique in the fact that they are the only mammals that like bees are incredibly well organized socially with a single reproducing female and male as well as divisions of labor amongst them. They have these kind of social strata with certain individuals focusing on specific tasks for the greater good of the group. Their tunnels are quite extensive. They can go down as much as 80 centimeters below the surface. And their tunnels have been found to be as much as a kilometer in length. They can also be quite grumpy little creatures. So if they're cornered, you just take care when you're handling them. Their, their strong jaws can deliver a mean bite. They've actually been found to be able to gnaw through concrete at times. The second thing you should know about these two groups of creatures that we've up till now been miscalling moles is that they also perform an important function of aerating the soil, they improve the drainage, they're essentially tilling the soil from beneath. And thirdly, and most importantly, based on my experience, it's incredibly difficult to get rid of mole rats in particular. I've tried just about every method of the last 30 years, uh, sonic devices, spinning plastic coat bottles, garlic solutions, Jack Russell's, urination, okay, not me personally, but apparently the smell of urine puts them off spending time in your garden, as it probably would for most of us. And I'm sad to say that when I was younger, I even used pesticides to get rid of them. And the thing is, none of these solutions have worked more than a couple of months, and, and most of them didn't work at all. Pesticides seem to work the best, but you have to weigh up the long-term damage that you're doing to the environment. The chemicals are highly toxic, they're heavier than air and so they, they poison the groundwater and all the surrounding soil and in the process they kill off all the life in the soil. So you might get rid of the moles in the short term but in the long term your grass and your plants will end up suffering because the symbiotic relationship they have with all the organisms in the soil will be, will be destroyed. At the moment, the advice that I most often give my clients is of more of a remedial nature. The best thing to do is, before you mow, uh, any molehills and any surface tumbling should be pressed down firmly with your feet so that you don't scalp your lawn as you cut it. And also during your annual top dressing, the loose soil can also be stamped back down 
you can roll it and then top dress over the top to just kind of deal with any minor unevenness that's been caused throughout the year. And this essentially gives the lawn a, a fresh start, but the moles will still be there and they'll eventually work your lawn back to its previous bumpy self. The other option is more of a preventative measure. So before you lay your grass, you can lay a galvanized wire mesh down about sort of 50 mils uh, below the surface. This will also stop dogs from digging up your lawn too, which is something I probably should have considered with Sammy being such a, a joyful digger. But this may make life difficult if you need to lay something underneath your lawn for any reason at a later stage, like pipes or electrical cables or something. But if the thought of a bumpy lawn sends you into spin, then maybe this is something worth thinking about. But as with most garden problems that come about from our attempts to try and control our environment, I think the best mindset is to work with nature and not against it. The Japanese have a philosophy called wabi-sabi, which essentially means to embrace perfection, something that we obsessive compulsive Westerners could do well to learn. Embracing the unevenness, the weeds, the creatures, the yellowing leaves, the non-linear and the imperfect is so hard for us to do, but it says so much about our overt need for control of the world around us. If you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the other videos. Otherwise, like and subscribe to be notified when a new video is ready. Otherwise, happy gardening.